With the transition into fall, not only should we change our skincare, but also hair care. So today, I want to share with you my top tips for caring for your hair and scalp this fall and winter. Hello, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And if you enjoy learning more about hair care content, scalp care, and ways that you can maximize hair growth for healthy and fuller hair, you've come to the right place. I would love it if you can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Why do we need to think about changing hair care for fall and winter? Number one, with the changes of season, namely the loss of moisture, less humidity, the dry and cooler weather that often leads to more dry scalp and dry hair. In fact, seasonal changes often from like winter to spring and from summer to fall, we often see a flare up of seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff. And even if you don't have dandruff and you live in a really cool and cold climate, you can have a dry scalp, dry itchy flaky scalp, kind of like dry skin and almost like scalp eczema, if you will. You know, skin and hair are similar. You know, they're all made of keratin. And even though they're not quite the same, the loss of moisture and humidity environment can definitely predispose your hair to drying out more. Secondly, it's been shown and really interesting that our hair growth does have a annual rhythm as well. Our hair growth, the amount of hair that is grown tends to peak in the summer, namely in July, and then slows down. And there's actually even a little bit more hair shedding in the fall. And we think that evolutionarily, that makes sense. Like in the summertime, our body made more hair to protect our scalp from the strong ultraviolet radiation. And then in fall and winter, there's less sun. So our body puts less energy into growing hair and you know diverts the energy elsewhere for survival. Um, now, as far as the shedding goes, you may notice some more what we call tea fluvium in the fall winter I don't think it's significantly more noticeable but if you're already someone who are going through hair thinning who have like say androgenic alopecia you definitely want to maximize your scalp care and hair care to reduce that shedding hair care is super personal even more so than skincare reasons being you know for skin many of us either have oily skin combination skin normal skin dry combination skin I mean there are only so many different variations right but for hair care not only do you need to think about your hair but also your scalp and so all of that plays a role into selecting the right products for you and the frequency of hair washing that you need to do like they're in the same individual you can have dry hair but oily scalp like myself or you can have dry scalp um, and color treated hair um, and if you have textured hair you know some of the tips may not be super applicable to you and so this is where you have to just understand your scalp your hair and what your needs are to find the right products for you I have more kind of greasy dandruff prone scalp I am almost uh, coming up one year postpartum I feel like during my postpartum period I've had a lot of probably with hormonal changes, greasiness in my scalp. Like I used to wash my hair only like twice a week and that was sufficient. Like basically I have to wash my hair every other day. Otherwise it just feels really greasy and itchy. And so that's definitely been a change for me. Um, but my hair, because I color treat my hair, I highlight my hair and I do quite a bit of curling, definitely is more on the dry damaged end. And so that's kind of a little bit of background for me. And so when I'm picking products, I tend to pick products that are number one, Helpful for controlling my greasy scalp and dandruff, but also not super harsh and aggressive on my hair. In mind, there's no right frequency of hair washing. It's super personal. You have to do what makes sense for you based on your scalp type. If you have oily scalp, it is totally okay to wash your hair every day. And conversely, if you have dry scalp, you may only need to wash twice a week. This is also where picking the right shampoo makes the most sense as well. One that you can gently use every day if you need to, and maybe one that you can kind of use once a week to more thoroughly clean. Um, basically what you don't wanna do is go too long between hair washing and let your scalp get greasy. Sebum itself leads to more dandruff, but also sebum causes oxidative stress that can really reduce impact healthy fuller hair growth. But on the other end of the spectrum, if you wash your hair too often, your scalp gets dry, flaky, and itchy, and that itself can be a different mechanism that can lead to inflammation. So it's just a delicate balance, and this is where a lot of it can be trial and error, but you know your scalp best, and so make sure to just find the right routine and products that works best for you. Okay, enough said, let's get into the tips. Number one is 
moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. So a little bit different than moisturizing your skin, but here what you want to do is add moisture into your hair and hydration into your scalp. So, you know, technically the other tricky part why hair care is so nuanced is that water is not ideal for hair, but it's good for your scalp. So this is where, why we have shampoos and conditioners because they're meant to one, shampoo care for your scalp and conditioners care for your hair. But regardless, the overall take home is that with the changes in temperature and drop in humidity, there's definitely gonna be less water content in the environment. So that means that the hair is more likely to feel dry, frizzy, brittle, but also your scalp scalp as well. So you can certainly think about changing your shampoo and conditioner to better support your hair and scalp. So in general, think about switching to a more hydrating shampoo, maybe something that is more gentle with gentle surfactants. And if you have really dry scalp or dry hair, something that's maybe sulfate free, and then a conditioner that's going to add more moisture. So lipids as well as conditioning agents that's going to help to coat your hair and make it less like to dry out and feel frizzy and I do want to share some personal favorite hair care products at the moment and if you're like me that have more like oily dandruff prone scalp but dry you know color treated damaged hair then these are products I think that are worth checking out so what I typically do for my hair I will use an anti-dandruff shampoo like once or twice a week and then use a more gentle shampoo on the other days and sometimes I will even wash my hair daily um, just depending on how it feels like after working out where I sweat a lot and there's just oil and stuff I don't let, like to let that sit especially you know having just <laughs> recovering from postpartum hair loss keeping scalp healthy is really important for hair growth and so I definitely do not wait too long between hair washing and one brand that I've been absolutely loving is one that I actually been getting from yes styles and it's a Korean brand it's called Lador they products of various different hair and scalp concerns and I also believe they make professional ones for salons but they're really known for keratin based um, hair care products and so as you guys know keratin mix predominantly is the kind of the structural protein in our hair and is what gives our hair strength and elasticity and that is kind of what is chipped away when our hair gets damaged but anyways they're really known for hydrolyzed uh, keratin protein as well as other protein in their products to help strengthen hair I've been loving this one it's called keratin LPP shampoo a couple of things number one it's um, has a low pH so our hair um, and scalp has a lower pH, usually hovering around three to four. And in general, and similar to our skin, cleansers kind of our higher pH. So that is how they remove things, but also how they disrupt our moisture barrier. This shampoo is formulated a lower pH, which is great for dry hair. Also contains a blend of hydrolyzed protein, including silk protein, jojoba oil, and other plant-derived extracts that are really gentle. Um, I basically love it because number one, it cleanses my scalp very well. My scalp doesn't feel irritated and dry afterwards, but I absolutely love how soft it makes my hair feel. Now, when you are using a shampoo, you should just focus your shampoo on your scalp. You should not be lathering the ends. Um, I mean, when you rinse off the shampoo, the shampoo kind of naturally will kind of do its thing as it's rinsing through your hair. Another shampoo that I've been loving that's very gentle on scalp with a scalp health focus, if that makes sense, is from Nutrafol. This is made of gentle surfactants um, with vegan protein and prebiotic ingredients that helps to really cleanse, but in a gentle way. And it's also sulfate free and no added fragrance. It does have a scent to it, but I just love how gentle, again, it is on my scalp, but also on my hair as well. In general, shampoos don't do much for hair growth. And I never will tell anyone, especially, you know, when patients come in to see me, um, you can't rely on a shampoo to grow your hair. So we definitely need to focus on scalp health when it comes to maximizing healthy fuller hair growth. And so if you are someone like me that need to wash the scalp on a regular basis, but have more dry damaged hair or worry about your hair being dry and damaged, I think this is a shampoo worth trying. The other thing to think about is maybe consider adding in a deep conditioning mask or deep conditioning your hair once a week, especially if you don't do that on a regular basis. Um, I tend to think of deconditioners as like a treatment for um, 
dry damaged hair certainly if you have healthy hair um, you don't need to use a conditioning mask but I find that a conditioning mask just makes my hair more manageable softer um, longer and so if you have someone like if you are someone like me again that have damaged hair um, with the fall and winter being more dry it definitely pulls more moisture out of your hair and so a conditioning mask once a week can certainly make your hair feel softer and less frizzy there definitely is a lot of conditioning masks on the market and I've talked about quite a few in my previous video but just to mention a few that I really enjoy using is one from Virtue Labs the restorative conditioning mask I believe that contains a blend of plant derived extract and their kind of trademark alpha keratin that can help to go into the hair to strengthen hair temporarily. I also really like Briogeo, their Don't Despair Repair mask if you are not into really um, big heavy protein based conditioner that does have some but most of it are just like plant derived oils that are nourishing but yeah consider adding a conditioning mask if you have more dry hair and using it like once a week I think is sufficient. Tip number two is prioritize your scalp health. As I mentioned, with the changes of season, there tends to be more flare up of dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis, even eczema or dry scalp. So really consider changing or adding in products to better support your scalp health. I think we focus a lot when it comes to, especially when it comes to hair loss, on things to stimulate hair growth. But the problem is, is if your scalp is unhealthy, it doesn't matter what you put on there, it's really not optimized to grow hair. Just like an analogy I can think of is if you're trying to use anti-aging products on a damaged skin barrier, you're just getting nowhere. So we actually know from studies number one that if you go too long between hair washing and you let your scalp get too greasy, sebum itself is um, pro-inflammatory. Two, sebum will grow, help basically induces more growth of malassezia yeast that can lead to dandruff. But both sebum and malassezia yeast creates oxidative stress on your scalp that basically leads to inflammation. We actually know from studies looking at individuals that have separate dermatitis and psoriasis, not only do they have less hair growth, the hair that's grown out of their scalp are usually um, more fragile, more fragile, brittle, and more prone to breakage. So this is where, especially if you're suffering from dandruff, especially if you have dandruff and you're trying to maximize hair growth, you really need to take a step back and focus on keeping your scalp healthy. So then you may be asking, well, what do I do to keep my scalp healthy? Well, number one, it really depends on your concern. But I think in general, if you are really trying to maximize hair growth and you have hair shedding, add in an anti-dandruff shampoo once or twice a week. The frequency of use really depends on number one, your hair type, the shampoo that you use, and two, whether you have underlying dandruff or not. I mean, if you have dandruff, then you definitely want to use an anti-dandruff shampoo formulated for your hair more frequently. But if you don't have concerns of dandruff, dry, itchy, flaky scalp, then using an anti-dandruff shampoo maybe once a week is sufficient. Reasons being is that studies have shown that anti dandruff ingredients, so namely like zinc perithione, ketoconazole, are anti-inflammatory themselves and have been shown to help with hair regrowth. So in all my hair loss patients that come to see me in clinic, even if they don't have dandruff, I will often recommend a ketoconazole or a zinc perithione based shampoo to use like once or twice a week. You know, like I mentioned earlier, you just don't want to go too long between hair washing. You don't want that sebum to sit on your scalp and oxidize. And like, for example, if you're someone who use a lot of dry shampoo or hair or products to your scalp, consider adding in a clarifying shampoo once a week. And then if you need to wash your hair every day, then use a more gentle shampoo like I mentioned earlier. But if you're like me, they're looking for a anti-dandruff shampoo to help with um, treating dandruff, but also is less drying on hair, because that's the main problem when it comes to anti-dandruff shampoos is unfortunately a lot of them, including prescription, ketoconazole, nizoral, they're just really drying on hair. Here are a few that I've tried that I find to be pretty gentle on hair, especially if you have like dry and color treated hair. Number one is a shampoo that I also purchased from Yes Styles, and it's a Japanese brand. It's called Kamino Moto Medicated Shampoo, and this contains 
contains an anti-yeast ingredient that is not as commonly used here in the US, but I believe it's more popular in Europe and Asia, and it's called pyroctane olamine. Very similar in mechanism of action to zinc pyrithium, but this also contains a few other anti-inflammatory ingredients along with jojoba oil. So I really just absolutely love the lather it creates, and I feel that my scalp is clean, but also as it's strengthening through my hair, my hair feels kind of detangled and soft and manageable. I often hate a lot of the times when I use like a prescription anti-dandruff shampoo that even though I detangle my hair and brush my hair before I wash my hair in the shower, just the act of lathering shampoo, that massage motion, as it's rinsing off, it creates more tangle in my hair, if that makes sense. Super gentle, very soothing. So great one to try if you have dandruff prone scalp but dry hair. Another one I've been loving is from Kerastase, their new Symbios line I've talked about before that comes with a range of shampoo, scalp scrubs, conditioners, and conditioning mask as well as scalp serum that contains a blend of salicylic acid and zinc pyrithium. But I absolutely love the shampoo from that line. It is one that I have used that really creates good lather, helps to cleanse my scalp in a gentle way, but at least my hair feels detangled and manageable. So that is another one that I think is worth trying out if you have oily scalp but color treated dry hair. Okay, now on the other end, if you have more like eczema prone scalp, dry scalp, you could consider using like a scalp mask, a hydrating scalp mask like once or twice a week that can add more nourishment to your scalp. And a lot of times these masks, you can also at the same time use it on your hair as well. And the two that I have tried that I really enjoyed the texture as well as the hydration is number one from Briogeo, their scalp revival charcoal and green tea cooling hydration scalp mask. It's a mouthful. Now, this one, I think technically you can use it even if you don't have dry scalp, but have like itchy flaky scalp because the charcoal and tea tree extract help with like oiliness, a little bit antimicrobial, anti-yeast mechanism. The charcoal may help to soak up some of the excessive sebum, but this also is in a creamy formulation that has spearmint and mint extract that has a cooling effect too. So really calms kind of itchy scalp really nice creamy texture that you apply on your scalp before you shampoo especially if you are dry scalp i think this is a nice soothing mask to use um, i think the thing with the scalp mask is just like you got to be ready to like do a good shampoo afterwards because it gets kind of messy the other thing to think about if you have dry eczema prone scalp using more gentle shampoos and ones i mentioned in my previous video that i really like is number one from vanna cream their hair care line that shampoo I recommend to individuals that have like contact dermatitis to hair care products so it's super gentle devoid of common allergens and so that is one to consider if you're more like eczema prone and then also Briogeo has I think it's called like their ultra be gentle kind line that is also fragrance free with more gentle surfactant that's less aggressive on your scalp so that can be another way to help cleanse your scalp without adding more irritation Another drugstore pre-shampoo mask is from Shea Moisture. I really like this one and it's a pre-wash mask for scalp and hair. It contains aloe, vitamin B3, along with other rich plant-derived oils and fatty acids that are just very nourishing. Shea Moisture itself is a line I really like for um, kind of texture, curly, kinky hair and run I recommend to my skin of color patients in clinic. Rich and creamy and nourishing even more so than the Briogeo. I actually love how soft it makes my hair feel. I think for my hair type, it's kind of hard to spread onto my scalp. Um, but certainly, like if you've tried this and you really like it, let me know in the comments below how uh, you're tricking to working this into your scalp. But yeah, this is certainly one that you can use to add moisture back into your scalp and hair. Tip number three is consider adding in a post-wash, post-conditioned styling product. Um, there are a lot of great products out there. Not that you need it, but if you have color-treated hair, have frizzy hair, and subject your hair to heat, these are things that 
I can offer additional protection and benefits. For me personally, I number one blow dry my hair before I sleep. I wash my hair at night and you never want to go to bed with wet hair. Wet hair is more fragile, it can break and cause more frizz as you sleep. And two, that dampness of your scalp over time can change your scalp's microbiome and predispose you to like fungal and dandruff. And so you always want to make sure that you blow dry your hair at night if you wash your hair, which is what I do. Um, but two, like with the drier weather, cooler weather, you may be more prone to feeling like having your hair feel dry and more frizzy. So a post wash styling product can soften the hair, coat your hair so that way it's less likely to feel dry and frizzy. My goals are to soften my hair, detangle my hair, reduce frizz, and keep my hair softer between hair washing, and then ultimately add in that heat protection. So the first styling product I recommend is from K18, and it's their Molecular Repair Hair Oil. Often oils can be a little bit too heavy and weigh your hair down, but this one is not. It's very light and liquidy and contains the proprietary um, K18 peptide. And not only does it help to soften hair, um, reduce frizz, but also offers great heat protection. You can use it on dry or wet hair. Another product that I've been loving, I've been using fairly exclusively for the past ooh, three months, is a leave-in conditioner that not only helps to soften, detangle, reduce frizz, but also helps offer some protection against hair breakage. And that is from Kerastase, their Genesis line. This whole line from Kerastase is really made for individuals that experience hair fall from hair breakage, like from brushing. And so of all the products, their shampoos, their serums, their conditioners, the conditioning mask, I love this one the most. It is a spray on leave-in conditioner essentially with great ingredients, amino acids, peptides, ginger root. When I apply it to my ends, it I love how instantly soft it makes my hair feel. And it's got nice silicones that won't weigh your hair down, but offers a lot of conditioning to your hair. This works as a heat protectant. So I literally will spray maybe like three to four pumps applied to my ends, and then I go ahead and blow dry. I also feel this reduces the blow drying time that I normally would need. So that is why I really have been obsessed with it. And if you're looking for something that also reduces blow drying time and mostly focus on reducing frizz, and more so in the summertime with the humidity, but also helps with heat protection. This one you probably have seen, but it's from WOW, their Dream Coat. It sprays on really nicely, it's really lightweight, um, offers heat protection, reduces the blow drying time, but also contains interesting ingredients, including polysilicone 29, which I think of as a very smart silicone um, that basically attaches to the hair where it needs to, that parts are damaged or needs extra care, and basically, doesn't weigh the hair down and so I love this one great I think all year round but especially for the summertime but I love it because it's super lightweight okay before we continue I want to just mention I absolutely love silicone in my hair care products I know that sometimes people are like no silicone you know silicone it's a huge category there are so many different types and depending on how it's formulated and what is used it can really be great at conditioning your hair, offering heat protection, protection against UV, softening your hair. And so, you know, as far as like no silicone, I really don't believe that should be the case. Um, people that may want to avoid super heavy duty silicone would be those with like really fine hair that can weigh it down. But again, depending on the type of silicone that is used, even if you have fine hair, you can find products if they're formulated for fine hair that won't make your hair feel heavy. I'm also not against sulfates either. I know many individuals may steer away from sulfates, especially if you have like dry hair, dry scalp, color treated hair. Uh, you can have a shampoo with sulfates that can be just as gentle as sulfate free, kind of down to the formulation. So, um, you know, I so I think both are great. It just all comes down to, you know, the product at the end of the day and how well it works for you. Tip number four is consider changing your hair accessories, pillowcases, and even maybe scarf, I guess, depending on how frequently you wear them, to satin or silk based. Reasons being is that these materials are less likely to cause frictional damage on hair. I think it's the most important for pillowcases, to be honest, because as we Sleep. We are maybe turning our heads, we're rolling around. There's definitely friction going on between your hair and the pillowcase. And silk and satin are less likely to cause that damage compared to like traditional cotton. And two, they're less likely to pull moisture out of your hair. And I definitely have noticed that difference ever since I switched 
my pillowcase from cotton to satin based my hair especially during the winter time i've noticed the biggest difference um feels softer and less frizzy between hair washing between conditioning so if you are individual especially if you have frizzy hair dry and damaged hair and live you know in the winter time in the cold climate making that switch can definitely keep your hair uh, more manageable softer and less brittle between hair washing and last but not least tip number five is don't forget your vitamin D. Um, vitamin D is a supplement that I routinely recommend to all my patients, regardless whether you have any sort of hair condition or experiencing hair loss. Reasons being number one, in the winter time, um, most of us tend to be vitamin D deficient. And two, as a dermatologist, we never recommend individuals going out to get sun exposure, risking their skin to get damaged to get vitamin D. Reasons being is number one, vitamin D synthesis varies depending on your skin color as well as where you live. Where I am, I catch vitamin deficiencies all the time. In fact, vitamin D lab is one I always track in individuals that comes in with the concern of hair loss. And I would say about 95% of the time, I catch vitamin D deficiency. Now, vitamin D deficiency could be the cause of hair loss, and that's called telogen fluvium. We have vitamin D receptors in our hair, and certainly it's really important nutrient for hair growth. But I would say often, you know, the individual may have like postpartum hair loss or have androgenetic hair loss. But the thing is, is if you're vitamin D deficient, even if the cause isn't vitamin D deficiency, you're not going to optimize hair growth if you are low in vitamin D. And so during the winter where there's already less sun exposure, it's really important to take vitamin D and a supplement to keep our you know hair healthy optimize hair growth but also for stronger you know teeth and bone all right guys i hope you find these five fall hair care tips helpful certainly it's very generalized and hair care is so personal it's not always applicable to everyone but let me know in comments below if you have any questions and certainly if you've tried any of these products let me know how well you like them or also comment below with your current fall hair care favorites i would love to try them myself as well as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time